Whoops, that's not supposed to be on the screen, but that's alright. So today I'm going to talk about something that is as equally imp important as everything else I've talked about already, and that is file I.O. I.O. means in and out. So file in, file out. Things like reading files and writing to files. I'm not going to talk about databases, I'm just going to talk about like text files, although you can write anything to any kind of file. But we're primarily going to talk about how to write text to a file. And very closely related to file I.O. is console I.O. So the user's ability to type something that your program can read. We're going to do both of those things. This should be relatively short because it's very easy to do file I.O. in Java. Here's how you do it. So let's say we wanted to get some user input. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm doing it that way. I'll use my shortcut. Enter some data. Put a colon, except we don't want print line. I want it to actually be on the same line. And then uh, here's how you're going to get data from, well, by default, uh, what I'm about to do gets it from the keyboard. You're going to have to create an object called a scanner. There are other ways to do this, but scanner makes it easy. You're going to make a new scanner, and the parameter it's going to take is an input stream. So there's an output stream, which writes data to some other place, and there's an input stream, which reads data from somewhere. We're going to read data from the console, and in Java, the console is just called system.in. And all I have to do is uh, go over here and import the scanner class. It appears up there, very good. And what I'm going to do, whoops. What I'm going to do now is string uh, response. Whoa, what was that? There was just like a big explosion where I am. Not not like a. It was like a rumble. Not it wasn't like a bomb or anything, but it was like somebody dropped something really heavy. Is what it sounded like. Response equals uh, scan dot, and you have all of these things. But the one we're going to use is next line. If somebody's typing something, scanner dot next line will read whatever's coming from the stream until a new line character is reached. I pretty much just uh, yeah, I pretty much just said exactly what this thing says. If you only wanted one character, actually I think next would be exactly the same thing. If someone's typing, I believe next and next line do exactly the same thing. Now there, there's some other stuff there that you might recognize if you went through the string video. Scan dot next. Where's the one that I saw? Next. Here we go. Pattern. Is string and pattern the same thing? Okay, these are both pretty much the same thing. A pattern is a regular expression object in Java, but a string is just a string, but they both take a regular expression. So I talked about regular expressions last time in the string video. This is another use of regular expressions. So you can actually get the next pattern that somebody is typing, or if we're reading from a file, you can look for the next of a certain pattern in that file. But we're just going to get next line. We're going to get anything that they type. And all I'm going to do is say you typed and then uh, put in response, except I'm going to need one more thing. I'm going to s out print line, uh, just an empty line, because otherwise, uh, actually I'll show you what's going to happen if I don't do this. It's, it's, it's not going to bug out, it's just going to look pretty weird. Give it a little, okay, enter some data. Hello. You typed, hello. Oh, it went It went ahead and did it anyway. I guess when I hit the next line, it went to the next line. That's fine. So I don't actually need this. So that's how you would get data from the, uh, from the console. You make a scanner object out of system.in, although you can make this out of anything. It can be a file in. It's not called that, you would have to make one. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then you do scan next line or scan dot next or scan dot next int. There's a whole bunch of options on the scanner that let you get some data. And then you just have the data and you can do whatever you want with it. So this is a very easy way of getting input from the user, especially if you're making a command line program, something that's not graphical, something that's just text. Uh, this is pretty much how all text-based games work. You, you just print out something, you wait for user response, you use string manipulation to figure out if their response is meaningful. So if they say go east or pick up dagger or something like that, you can make sense of it in your program. 
that's my Skype, I apologize. Um, I wish I could mute that, but I, I don't really want to. <laughs> Sorry, that's mine again. Okay. But this is how all text-based adventure games used to work. I'm not talking about like where there's graphics and they, there's some text. I'm talking like 100% text-based. These are really old. I think they're, they're called MUDs. I think they're, that's what they used to be called. But everything like the really, really old, uh, like Black Cauldron and Shadowrun, these all used to be 100% text-based. And they all just basically did a giant loop of this. And they just tracked what room you were in. Sir Pandy! I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome to the stream. You're one of the early comers. All right, so we've learned how to do uh, reading from the console. Now we're going to read from a file. But first, I need a file to write to, or uh, sorry, I need a file to read from. So we're actually going to create a file that we can read from. Let me just comment this up here. That is still my Skype. I'll keep this stuff here, and then I will comment all of it out. So it's not in our way. Sir Pandy says, we only started with Java in school. Hope I can learn something good here. That's awesome, dude. What what level of school are you in? I'm just curious because I started programming not through classes. I just started like teaching myself when I was in 14, which is like middle school, high school. But I never took actual classes until college. So I'm just curious. There are some other people who have taken it in high school and who, who are programming in middle school even. So I'm just kind of curious. But anyway, here's how we're going to do file manipulation in Java. Java has a set of, I'm going to type it up here actually so you can see, import java.io. That's not what I wanted to see. Oh, import, import java.io. Maybe it'll work this time. There we go. So these are all of the IO classes that Java offers. And I know there's a lot of stuff here. You probably don't need to read much of this. The one we're going to want is file. We're probably going to use a few other ones, but don't worry about it. So I'm going to make a file, my file equals new file. And the constructor that I usually use, there are a bunch of them, but the one that I usually use is I put the path to the file into the parameter. You can put a URL, uh, a URL object, not a string. You can put a URI. I believe you can put like another file. Uh, in school for education to IT assistant. Is that college level? I, I have no idea what that means. But anyway, so for example, if I had my file at uh, C program files uh, test.txt, this is how I would locate my file. Oh, you're German. Cool. Yeah, in uh, over here in the States, in America, our um, our IT and programming um, education system is pretty new for public schools. We, we've had it for colleges and universities, but for public schools, uh, teaching kids programming in middle school and high school is kind of rare over here, so that's why I was curious. But yeah, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're in uh, high school, it looks like, 11 and 12th grade. That's really cool. I wish I had programming classes when I was in high school. I would have had a lot more fun, I think. So anyway, this is how we locate a file. Now this doesn't actually create your file, and it doesn't actually read your file. This Java file object merely locates it and kind of tracks it, so you can do certain things to it. Like, you can check if the file exists. Okay, this, is, this returns true or false. Why does it do that? My auto-completes. I need to disable that. I thought I did. So this method exists will return true if the file exists and return false if it doesn't exist. So if I go to, uh, I'm going to keep that window open and make a new one. If I go to C program files, you'll see I don't have a test.txt anywhere in here. So this method will actually return false. And I'm going to print it out. Um, okay, so this should return false. And we see it returns false. This doesn't exist. Yes, this is a file object in Java. In fact, I can show you what it looks like by debugging. I know I haven't taught you guys the debuggers. Right, the program is basically storing the location of where it would be. 
and some other metadata about it if it has any. So this my file object, if I just look at it, I can look at it at the bottom, but I'll look at it in here. So the path is what I told it in the string, the C program files text. It says status null, file path is null, and prefix length is three. I don't actually know what prefix length is. And there's a bunch of other file stuff. A lot of this is uh, like my operating system is Windows, so the separator in directories is a backslash, so it's storing stuff like that. But yeah, it's just basically storing a a, um, it's basically storing the file location and some other stuff that's not important. It's not actually reading the file or doing anything else like that. We're gonna stop the debugger now. So yes, it's it's just a variable that says I uh, I might want to use this thing that may or may not be a file. Not only can I ask if it's a file, watch this, where's my program, okay, program files, see I have this folder called Java, so instead of test.txt, I'm going to write Java right here. So watch, it'll return true, unless it's case sensitive. Okay, it returned true, so there is a Java file in here, but it's not really a file, it's a folder. And the reason it's doing this is because files can also represent directories, they can represent folders. So uh, I don't even need this line since it's on the next one. So we're going to do an s out again. My file dot is directory. So this should also return true. And there's in the uh, exact opposite of this, which is instead of is directory, is file. So this exists. It is a directory, but it's not a file. So we should get true, true, false. True, true, false. Okay. What else can I do with files? Let's see. Uh, can execute, can read, can write. If you're on most operating systems, these will always be true. But if you are on Unix, uh, some of these might be false because uh, Unix has uh, like permissions. Uh, create new file. If the file doesn't exist, this is something you'll see a lot. Exists, but why does it do that? If file doesn't exist, you gotta put a not in front of that, then we'll say my file dot create new file. Which basically tells your operating system, I want this to be an actual file. I think there's also create new direct what's it doing? Oh it's uh it's it's complaining because I didn't catch an IO exception. If for some reason you're not allowed to create a file here, it'll uh it'll throw an IO exception. That's not very common though. Why did it oh man my autocomplete is really weird. What else can we do with files? That's a long question. I'll read in a second. Uh, let's see, can read, can write. You can delete files. I'm not going to put an if in there. You can uh, see if it exists. We got that. Don't worry about absolute or anything. Make dir, you can make a directory. Make dirs. I think make dirs is the same as make dir, except it makes all the directories above it if they also don't exist. So if I was trying to create Java, you know, slash one, slash two, slash three, none of those folders exist. Uh, so it would create all of them. All right, so if I'm going to catch up on the chat real quick. Official Night TV says, I was wondering, currently I'm learning Python. I was thinking about teaching myself JavaScript. Is it worth it to learn JavaScript? Yes. JavaScript is a very, very common scripting language, especially if you're doing web development. JavaScript is the most common thing to do in web development. Um, I would say JavaScript is more important to learn than Python in almost all cases. Uh, is there a similar thing for C++? With file IO, yes there is. Uh, C, has a, uh, C has a namespace called uh, IO. I think it's just called IO. Let's see, in, in, include STDIO. It's called STDIO. And uh, it, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't, actually C++, I know it is in C you import stdio. I haven't used C++ in a while, so I don't remember. There, There is a file um, import for C++, but um, I don't remember exactly how to use it. Uh, oh, the file exists. I, I Sorry, I saw the file exists, and uh, it, um, it was highlighted in a different color, and I thought it was a different person typing. Is there a similar thing? I mean, this my file exists, because we work with creating text files through the program, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't. I haven't used C++ in a while. I imagine there is. I would imagine that you can determine whether a file exists in C. 
that would be kind of important. I just don't know what it is, I'm sorry. Uh, JavaScript looks way more complicated, that's because it is. In, uh, in JavaScript, I think Sir Pandy, he says, he thinks his teacher did it like, if not file, or something like that, if it exists or not. If that's JavaScript, then that makes sense. Uh, he's talking about, um, instead of exists, he's saying his teacher did this. This is not allowed in Java, because my file is an object, and there's no, and objects can't be true or false. But in JavaScript, objects can be true or false. It's, it's this thing called truthy and falsy. So, if it's, if you type this, uh, and this is supposed to be a file object or a file variable, this, uh, this part, not the exclamation point, this part will be true if it exists or has any data. If it's null, then it will return false. Or if it's undefined, it will return false. That's JavaScript. Java's not like that. Okay, you actually have to do dot exist. You have to turn it into a... Why does it do that? Alright. I bet there's like a shortcut in my code templates that's doing it when I don't want it to. And I think there was one other thing. Make dir, make dirs. Um, you can convert them back to the path that you gave them, or a URI, which can be kind of useful. Uh, list files lists all the files in this directory, if it is a directory obviously very useful. Um, I don't actually know what length does. Is this the file length? Length of the file? I guess so. I've never used file length. D Lion says, sup man? I'm having a great night. I had kind of a fun day at work, but now I'm here. Uh, so there are a lot of things that you can do on file objects, but you guys don't really care about that. You want to read and write to file objects, right? So we're going to leave this line up here, this, if it doesn't exist, create a new one. Except I'm going to rename this, we're just going to name it test.text. Now if you don't specify a folder in front of it, like C program files or whatever, if you don't put that up here, it will make this file wherever your Java program is launched. It's not technically accurate, but uh, it's... Um, Basically, wherever you launch it from, uh, it would take me a long time to explain, but basically, what I, here's my test project root directory for NetBeans. It's going to create it in this folder, I, I believe. Let's, let's find out. If it doesn't exist, create a new file. I'm just going to run this. We get false, 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 and let's see, uh, there it is, test.txt, but you'll notice, you can't see it, whoops. You'll notice it's rather empty, because I haven't written anything to it. So here's how we're going to write to a file. So this is create a file. I think if you try to create a file that already exists, it will throw an exception. Let's try it. Let's comment this guy out, and let's see what it does. I've never tried this before. I guess if it tries to create a new file that already exists, it just ignores it. Or maybe it... I'm going to put something in this, and I'm going to see if it clears it out. I've never actually tried this before. I probably could have just read the, uh, yeah, it doesn't, it just ignores it. So if the file already exists, it doesn't do anything. So either way is fine, but I guess this is the better, um, this is the better way to do it, because this might be platform independent, meaning this might work differently on Windows, it might work differently on Mac, so you don't know if it's safe, really. So it's always better to look like, and it looks nicer, people know exactly what you're trying to do. Anyway, now we're going to write to a file. Who keeps texting me? Hold on, I'm going to check the Skype real quick. Uh, and what do you want? Okay. Sorry about that. My Skype keeps going off. I'm popular today, I guess. Don't like C++ since we started to manipulate C libraries. Wished we would have started with Java. Yeah, starting with C++ is probably one of the worst things they can do. Starting with C is better. Because C++ is just C but with more stuff attached to it and uh, a different syntax. C and Java are rather basic. C++ has a lot of added stuff that is like built into the language that you have to learn. So C++ has a higher learning curve than regular C or Java or like Python. There are a lot of languages that are simpler than C++. Um, 
sorry, Lion, I cannot help you with a project on stream unless it's a programming. If you have like a quick question about your project, go ahead and ask. I'll answer anything programming related. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna write to a file. So this is one way to write to a file. There are many ways to write to a file, but I'm gonna show you one way. Okay. First, we're gonna need some kind of output stream. File writer is one such output stream. Actually, I'll name it FW. And the parameter that it takes is the file, so I'm gonna do my file. And I'm gonna import it. That's the wrong button to import. I don't actually remember my import shortcut. I'll just click on that. Now, file writer's cool, but you're gonna get some weird stuff because it's expecting raw data, I believe. I don't know if you need a buffered writer, but I always make one. And this takes a file writer object. I'm not going to explain what all of these do. Like I said, this is one way to write to files. This is kind of a safe way to write to files, but it may be a little bit slow because you're creating so many objects and you're putting a bunch of streams inside each other. So what we're going to use to write to the file is the print writer. The print writer accepts text, like ASCII, Unicode, that kind of thing, and it will convert it down into what a buffered writer can read, which will convert, which will send it to the file writer. So we're going to use this, it's going to send it to this, which is going to send it to this, which is going to put it in our file. All right, so we're going to do pw.printline, whoops, printline, testing, and we're going to run this. Now this is going to have an, not an error, but it's not going to do what we want. I'll show you in a second. So I ran the program. Now I'm going to look in this file. And it's empty. I don't expect anybody to know why this is if you're new. So I'm just going to tell you. This isn't like a... Uh, it's kind of a trick question. The reason why nothing happened is because... Well, there are many reasons. But if you want all of your text that you've written to be saved you have to use a close method or a flush method. Uh, but particularly, you need to close your streams when you're done. Now, this is dangerous. Usually, people would put this in a try-catch. Actually, they would put all of this in a try-catch. Uh, because if you close a stream that doesn't exist, or a stream that hasn't been opened properly, or, you know, there, there are many errors that can happen if you just declare these things and do them. So this is a very naive... Uh, slightly cor incorrect way to do it. I'm just showing you what objects you need. So now if we'd run this, our text file should get some text in it. And we've got some text. I'm gonna do that in Notepad++ so you can see it. hey -o, it's on the other screen. One second. Ah, there we go. It says testing. Very good. Make this bigger. Alright, so now we've got some text in our file. You don't need something like pwopen. No, pwopen is basically doing this. I think you can reassign. Uh, maybe not. Okay, there's no way to reset what it's re what it's writing to. Yeah, the pwopen is basically when you make it like this. If you want to have it open a new uh, file, you would have to reassign it like this, and you'd have to have another buffered writer or another file writer. But yeah, the, the PW open is basically in the it's in the constructor essentially. So this is how you write to a file. Okay. Now we're gonna read from a file, and uh, to do this, we're gonna comment out this stuff. Uh, one thing I will say though, for things like buffered writers, the way that buffered writers work is it's very inefficient to write to a file character by character. So like, you know, put the letter N, or what did I do? T, put the letter T, you know, write the letter E, write the letter S. That's very slow and inefficient. So what a lot of these things do is they won't write to the file, they'll just, they'll keep hogging up data, and after a certain point, once you've entered a certain amount of characters, then they would write the whole thing to a file. That's what this buffered writer does. And you can force it to write to the file by calling, uh, writer dot flush. Oh, the thing's not going to come up, but I would I would do this. I'd probably do it on pw actually. pw dot flush. Flush means anything that you have given it but it has not saved yet is going to go ahead and put in the file. 
usually you won't have to use that, but sometimes it's necessary. It's good to know how streams work. Basically, you're putting things in the stream. They're not going directly to the file right away. It's just kind of storing it temporarily until you call flush or close. Flush or close is what actually puts it in the file. Okay. So we're going to read from a file. Let's see, there are many ways to read from a file, and I actually haven't done the code for this in a long time because I have some of my own code somewhere else that does it for me, and I always use that. So let's see, file reader, whoops, get out. You can actually use scanners to do it. Do I have mis- I commented out the scanner, okay. And instead of putting system.in in our scanner, we can just put the file. I believe this is allowed. Yes, it is. And then so uh, what you would do to read a file is you'd have a loop while scan.hasNext or has next line or has next whatever. This is one way to do it. There are lots of ways to do this. Oh, one way we got to do it is uh, string file contents equals empty string. We're going to do file contents plus equals scan dot next line sure I believe this will work it might throw an error I don't remember like I said I haven't actually written code like this in a long time because I don't need to okay looks like it worked so this true false true is for this file stuff that's up here I'm just gonna get rid of and then it printed out testing which is what's in our file so this is one way to read from a file. A more efficient way to read from a file if you don't want to use a scanner is you can just directly use a file reader or a buffered reader or something like that. It's kind of like this but backwards. You use a file reader or a buffered reader and you use a, I think, a, actually let me see if I can remember how to do it. I haven't actually done this in a long time. Gotta import it and then buffered reader new buffered reader on the file reader import that and then a br dot yeah there it is while br dot ugh. there's a really shorthand way to uh, to put this in a while loop but I don't remember what it is Here's one way you could do it. While true, and this is going to look like an infinite loop, but it's not, I promise. And you would add to your string, let's actually uh, reset file contents to an empty string. File contents plus equals br dot, you can either do read line, but where's read? Read gives a single character, I believe. There's something wrong with this, what is it? read returns a negative number if there's nothing right. I'm just gonna go to the, oh, it's not gonna tell me. Let me go to the Java doc for this. One of the great things about IDEs, you can just look at what the code does. Reads a single character and returns, oh, it returns the character. Excellent. What does it do if it's out? That's also in the Java doc, let me read it. Uh, the character read as an integer, or negative one if the end of the stream has been reached. There's a way to do this in the while loop. It's something like... No, that's wrong. I don't actually know how to do it. Let's do it this way. int character equals br.read if the character ch. Okay, if the character is negative one, break. That means break out of the loop. I don't remember if I've done that. I think I have, but not very. Otherwise, this is going to be a, a dead else, but that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to add to file contents, and I'm just going to copy this line right here. So if I did everything right, what did I do? So if I did everything right, why is that still there? If I did everything right, we should see the word testing twice on this right up here. Uh-oh, we didn't do it. Okay, it's reading, uh, I probably have to do something like this. 
like I said, I, this is how my file reader does stuff, but I don't actually remember. Wait, it might be in, up here somewhere. I think it's in one of my projects. Let me see. Um, where is it going to be? It's going to be under utils, maybe? Um, nope, it's not in there. Okay, it's not in any of the projects I have open currently. But there's something you can do like this, and C has the same thing where you have uh, int blah 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 equals character read not equal one. But you can write a loop kind of like this to get the file contents. I don't actually remember exactly. You know what, I, I want to show you guys. So I'm going to go to my email, but I'm not going to show my email on stream because that would be stupid. Just bear with me for a second, listen to the music. Uh, it'll be from me. Get caller class is not what I want. Here it is. I think this is it. Let me uh, let me just look at it in Gmail. No preview. Oh, that's lame. Okay, let's open it. Hello. Uh, unsafe. How about read? Actually, I think it's going to be called like get file contents or something. Get web pages string. Oh, here it is. All right, I'm going to copy this code, like the whole method. I'm going to copy the whole method and put it in here so it's nice and big. Here's what the code looks like. Let's see if I remember how it works. All right, so string builder is just a way to make a string. Let me minimize that. Um, when I have a file that would save name, age, and money, and I want to have those three things in, in one line on Notepad. So, okay, I'll go over that in one second. That's actually rather easy to do. All right, so here's what this uh, code is doing. Get file as string, you give it a file object. All right, so a string builder is basically a string that you can add to. The problem with adding to strings is they take up a lot of memory. So string builder is kind of more efficient, but you can just use strings uh, if you're new. Don't worry about the string builder. Imagine it's a string. So uh, if the file doesn't exist, we return empty string. If it's directory, return empty string. So this is all just error handling, basically. So we are making a file reader. Oh, and I do do while true. While true, int character equals, we're going to read a character. If it's less than zero, we end the loop. Otherwise, we add the character. Oh, it's exactly what I did, but with error handling. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the whole method, of course, we're going to call close. Uh, and then we're going to call close again, just in case it didn't close. <laughs> and then we return what we got. So it's basically what I just did, except, yeah, my problem was I need to uh, put this was missing last time. So let's see if it works. There's one. Uh-oh. I think we have an infinite loop. Less than zero. Another infinite loop. What did I do? All true. If, uh, if it's less than zero, break. Otherwise... I have no idea why this is infinite looping and this other one doesn't. I must be missing something. I want to figure this out. Alright, well, anyway, that is what you do. I don't know why this isn't working, but this one probably does. Anyway, that's how you read from a, uh, a file. Sir Pandy is asking uh, something related to a project or an assignment he has to do. If you're reading a bunch of data that's all on the same line. So I'm going to actually use his example. Whoop, I don't want that. I want to go into uh, our little test text. I'm going to put some of his data. Whoops. I'm going to put some of his data in here. So like uh, John 1830. And then uh, Manuel whoops, uh, 1350. I'm going to use some of your test data, Sir Pandy, if that's OK with you. I should have done that in Notepad++. What happened to my other folder? Did I get rid of it? Let me go find where that file is again. Here. All right. We're do this in Notepad++. Yep. All right, so here's his test data. So it's going to be a name, and then what was his second one? Name, age, and money. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So we have a little mini project that has been assigned to us by Sir Pandy, and we're going to vanquish it. Are you guys ready? So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Um, I probably should put it in Dropbox in case you guys want examples. You know, I'm going to copy this into a new text file real quick, just so I can save it and maybe give it to people later if they want. Okay, so we're going to 
we're going to keep that part. We're going to uh, we're going to keep that because that's good practice. We're not going to write to the file, so we're going to get rid of all this. We're going to read from the file. We'll go ahead and use the scanner one because we know that it works. So we're going to get rid of this stuff. All right. So here's how I would do your problem. Okay. In one of my previous videos, I talked about arrays and lists. This is a really good chance to use an array list. That's not an array that is a list. It's actually a list that's an array. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be confusing you. ArrayList is an implementation of a list. There are different kinds of list. There's linked list, there's other stuff, but ArrayList is what I usually use. Um, so let's call it data equals new ArrayList. This is how you make a new ArrayList after you've imported it. These, this is called the diamond uh, operator or the diamond interface and how do I want to explain this what I've put in here is called a generic type so this array list class you can actually put any object in here and what it's gonna do is it's gonna store a list of whatever this object is so in this case we're gonna store a list of strings okay and uh, this is a very naive implementation again there are a lot of there are a lot of different ways to do lots of things in programming. I'm going to do one way that's relatively simple. What I would normally do is I'd make a new class called, uh, you know, person or something like that. Maybe I will do that actually. That's that's much better practice. Where is my uh, pack? I'm in checkmate package for some reason. Okay, we're going to create a new class and I'm going to call it the person person class. So here's our person. I'm going to get rid of these comments. So uh, private string name, private int age, private int money. Here's our person. Can I generate getters and setters? Uh, usually there is a way to do it. Complete? Oh, that's useless. I'll have to make my own. Um, I'm going to fill that in in a second. You know what, uh, just for the sake of time, I'm going to make all of these public. Normally I wouldn't do this. You'd make these private, and you'd make a method to access or write to each of them. But I'm going to make them public just to save time. How long have I been working with Java now? Ugh. Let's see, if I started when I was maybe 18 or 19, so almost 10 years. About, yeah, probably about 10 years. Long time. So here's what I would do. Um, you might be able to see where this is going. My person constructor, if you remember from the, the video on objects and classes, this, you know, you usually, usually would have like public int method name or public void method name. I am not 19. No, I'm, uh, I'm quite a bit older than that. But I'm not old. I'll leave you to guess my age, but I'm not going to tell you my age even if you guess it, so don't bother. This is a constructor when it's just public and then the name of the class. Okay, so this is our constructor. If we call new person, it'll call this method and it'll create our person. So what we're going to do is this line of data right here is going to be uh, one of the things. Uh, that's not what I wanted. It's going to be one of these things. So this is going to be a line of data. I don't want the whole, I just want this part. So it's going to be something like that, but we don't know exactly what it's going to be. This is Java. Darocker77 just joined, wanted to know what language this is. We're programming in Java. Sir Pandy asked a, a pretty fast to do question where he wants to know if he's got data like this. I actually just took his data. How would we write a program to read and, uh, and separate these values? So this is one value, John. This is a second value and a third value. And the same thing for the next line. He wants to know how he would go through and make sense of this. So that's what we're doing. So this constructor is going to take a line of data, which is just one of those lines. We will feed this data in later. Just remember that it's here in the back of your head. I'm going to close these other tabs because I don't need them right now. All right, so here's we've made our array list. We're actually not going to make an array list. It's going to be an array list of people. So person. Person's the name of the class. It's an array list of persons. 
Okay, Java doesn't have, like, irregular verbs and irregular nouns. And so what we're going to do is we've made our file. That's where it is, right? Yeah, that's where it is. So we've made our file pointing to where our data is. We haven't read from it yet. We've only made the file locator. I'll call it a file locator because it's pretty much what it is. And we know that this code is going to read our entire file. But we don't actually, you know, just want to print it out. I'm just going to run this because it should print both lines. It prints both lines, but it doesn't print the new line in between because we're not telling it to. So what we're going to do is string line equals scan next line. This is Java. Derocker 77. Unless you're asking a new question, this is Java. Anyway, so we're going to scan from in the first time we run this loop. It'll be the first line, which will be the John 1830. That's going to be contained in the variable line. All we're going to do uh, equals new person. We're going to pass in what we have just read. Why are you creating a file if it doesn't exist? It's just end. No. Why are you creating a file? Okay, so this is a file. This is not the actual file. This first line right here, line 19, this is a file locator. In Java, you don't just read a whole file when you do this line. What it's actually doing is you give it a path to a file. In this case, I've given it the path to this file, which is just in the Java directory. Yeah, it's like a placeholder or a reference. Xtria, he got it. It's a, it's a placeholder or a reference. I wouldn't call it a placeholder. It's a reference to a file if the file exists. So we're checking if it exists, and if it doesn't, this exclamation point means you know, not. It means negate whatever the logic is after it. If the file doesn't exist, then we create a new one. That's what it's that's what it's doing. Only language you know is Python. You gotta learn some more languages, man. Once you learn the first one, that's always the hardest one. Once you learn the first language, the others become really easy. Because they're all basically the same, I'll be honest. There's a few that are kinda weird, but most languages are, are pretty similar. So we're gonna have a list of people. Actually, I'm not gonna call it data. I'm going to call it people list. All right, so we're going to read one line at a time. So while it has another line, we're going to read the next line that we haven't read yet. And we're going to call this cons... Uh, my mouse double clicks sometimes, so I'm just like dragging a new person line. I got to get a new mouse, seriously. But we're not done because we have to add our person to this list. Last time I talked about, this music's actually kind of annoying. I'm going to go to the next one. Sorry. All right. What was I saying? We've made a new person. But if you remember what I talked about methods, anything that's inside brackets, if it's not contained somewhere else, it just disappears when the brackets end. So as soon as we hit this bracket right here, this string will stop existing and this person will stop existing. But we don't want that. We want to store the person in our array. So we're just going to add it to the array. Uh, new person. New person. Not new person. Okay, so when this finishes, I'm actually going to comment out, or just get rid of this line. When this finishes, our array list, people list, is going to contain two people. They won't have any attributes because we haven't defined our constructor yet. That's what we're about to do. Why create one though? since it will just be empty and it won't have any data. Uh, in this case, we could do that. That's a weird name. Scalid, Scalidindi, I got it, I think. Scalidindi asks, if, we're just, if we know that we only want to read from a file and the file doesn't exist, why would we bother doing any of this other code? That's a very good point. Actually, if the file doesn't exist and we make a new one, then this will never actually be true. It will never have a next line because it's empty. So the, it'll actually just skip most of this code. But yeah, I, I could have done that either way. If we know that we're only going to read from the file, I can just return here. That would be totally acceptable. Uh, the reason that this is here is because earlier we were actually writing to the file and I just kept this code because it's good practice to have code like this. You check if it's empty or you check if it's null and then if it is, you do something about it. That's basically what this means. Check for error 
and then this next line is do something about it. This is what like 80% of Java code looks like. It's check for error and then do something about it. Okay, this is most of what you'll write in your life, unfortunately. It's just making sure your program won't crash all the time. This is what these four lines of code do. It's really two lines, the brackets don't really count. Anyway, so we have a list of people now, but we have not actually solved his problem of how do we go through the data. So you may remember from the string manipulation, there are very many ways to parse a string. And the way that I'm gonna use, since I know what the data looks like, is I'm gonna use string.split. Okay, what string.split does is it gives you back an array, um, line of data.split, and the thing that you put inside split is what's called a delimiter. Is there any other way to create a file? Not in Java. The only way to create a file in Java is to do create new file. Because, I mean, there are other functions that other libraries use that you can do it, but at some level they're all going to call file.createNewFile. The reason for that is at the very lowest level in all programming languages, they're just opcodes for your CPU, for your processor. So your processor actually has an instruction for creating a new file, and that's what Java's doing, and it only has one instruction. So it doesn't make sense to have multiple ways to create files, because that's an operating system thing. Your operating system is actually what's creating the file. Java's just sending it a message. So that's why there's only one way to create a file. There's also one way to delete a file. There's one way to, uh, to lock a file. So if you start reading from it, you don't want something else to edit it. Uh, there are a lot of those. But uh, if you go forward in computer science, you'll learn about those. But that was a good question. All right, so we're going to get back to, uh, Sir, to Sir Pandy's plight, which is how do we go through the data that we've supplied to our constructor? The split method, like I was going to talk about before all these questions came in, the split method takes a string and it breaks it up based on a pattern. The pattern we're going to use is a space, because these are spaces. They could have been commas. They could have been, uh, you know, they could have been pipes like this. Any kind of delimiter you can use to split. This is a tutorial learn how to thing. I've been doing Java for 10 years. Yes, it is a tutorial. But I keep answering questions, which is why I haven't written any code in the last four minutes. But we're about to do it. So split will break up a string based on a delimiter that you give it. And I talked about regular expressions in the string video. The regular expression we're going to use is space. That was easy. My, one of my coworkers actually has like a staples easy button where you press it and he goes, that was easy. It's amazing. I press it all the time. <laughs> all right. So we've got an array and it should contain, uh, don't worry about this code. The only reason I'm doing this is so I can debug the thing. So this array should now contain three uh, pieces of data each. So data, so data zero is John data 1 is 18 and data 2 is 30. That's all we had to do, we just had to use string split. But you could have used string index of with substrings. If you watch the string video I go over those. This is probably the easiest way to do it. Like it's one line of code and then once you have done that all you need to do is name equals data 0. This is very error prone. I will tell you why. Equals uh, data 1 Oh, not int. We already have an age. And money equals data2. So, what? What happened? Public, public. Oh, because it's a string. Uh, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to do this. I could turn them into integers, but I don't really want to do that right now. So this is... Yes, this is a... F it, I wouldn't call it a fork of NetBeans. It's JMonkey Engine. It's basically NetBeans, but it comes with some extra plugins that are used for uh, making 3D games in JMonkey Engine. But it, it's basically NetBeans, yeah. It's NetBeans with some extra features. If you're using NetBeans, that's just fine. Some people use Eclipse, but I like NetBeans. Eclipse is good, too. Anybody else know C Sharp? I know just a little bit. It's pretty much like Java, but I don't know the, uh, the kind of the tricks you can use. 
So I'm going to go back here. We've finished our constructor. Our person can now read data from the file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop. We're going to loop through all of the people we've made. Put an extra space. And we're going to do uh, dot print f uh, person. Actually, I'll just go um, name uh, percent s age percent s and what was it money percent s and so it's going to be p dot name p dot age and p dot money and one more th oh at the end of this i'm going to put a new line character so our output looks semi-decent let me see if i can stretch this out a little bit so you guys can see the whole thing maybe i'll minimize this part instead so um i have not oh no <laughs> no speakers listen watching a, a video where somebody's talking that's horrible now's the time where we make a bunch of jokes about him <laughs> okay so anyway i wish i had captions on my uh, that <laughs> I don't have captions, but I wish I did for him. Anyway, um, what was I going to? Okay, so this printf, all it's going to do is whenever it sees a percent something, it's just going to replace it with something in this list. So the first percent s is going to replace, be replaced by the first thing in this list. The second percent s will be replaced by this. So his name is going to go here, his age is going to go here, and his money is going to go here. That's all the printf does. So now I'm going to run this and see if everything worked. It looks like everything has worked. So we got John, age 18, money 30, manual 13, uh, money 50. Now there's a problem with this code. There's actually a bug, I believe, I, have, I haven't really studied my own code a lot, but there's a bug that will, there's a bug that will, let me see, there's a bug that definitely will cause this code to crash. Does anybody see what it is? Maybe I'll open this in so you can see both at once. Okay, so on the left, uh, let's close some of these. So on the left, I made them public to save time. Give me a break. I'll make here. I'll make them private just for you. Yeah, it's good practice to do this. I was just saving time because I didn't want to do all this. Public string get age. While you guys are thinking of what the bug could be. And we're never going to set these variables, so I'm not really worried about it. And then we're going to get a bunch of errors over here. Uh, let, me, let me put these on the next line, just so they all fit. Are you happy, rascal? Are you happy now? It's okay. I live to please you guys. All right. Does anybody see the bug? I'll leave it up for a few more seconds. There's actually a way that I can cause this code to crash. Is anyone thinking or are you just listening to the music? Yes, I'm using a stream-friendly font size. I don't know how to pronounce your name because it's half numbers, so I'm not going to try. Aha! Scaladindi has it. He says you can have an array index out-of-bounds error if a line does not have three pieces of data. Actually, it's if the line has less than three pieces of data. If you have more, it's just fine. But if you have less, so I'm going to make a new thing. Let's do uh, let's do uh, Anthony, and he's got uh, he's he's 20 years old. And that's all the line's going to contain. So I'm going to run this. Where's my console? There it is. Here's my console. Array index had bounds exception two, because our data is only going to have two things in it. So it's, this is going to be allowed. This is going to be allowed. It's going to error right here on this line 15, which is exactly what it says. Person.java line 15. 
So good job, Skeletindy. He saw it. So that's the bug. So the way you'd want to fix that, there are a couple ways you can fix it. You can validate it here, maybe, to detect if a line has a certain number of delimiters in it. Or you can detect it in the constructor, where uh, you basically say if data is less, if data length is less than three, then uh, either make up data or set it to blank or whatever. There are a lot of ways that you can fix this error, but let me put these, these back in one window now. Get up there. Get up there. No, no, you can, right there. Perfect. So yeah, that's exactly what I would do. What I would do is I would say if data dot length less than three, if we're always expecting three, then we would actually do our, our code. And if it's not, then we would have some kind of uh, some kind of error handling. Maybe we'd set them all to blank, or we'd we'd print out some error telling you that one of your lines of uh, of data was bad. Please fix it. You know, something like that. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of programming, whether it's new code or existing code, a lot of programming is just thinking about what can go wrong. Because your program, you know, getting one thing to work is easy. But getting it to work for all possible input is really difficult. Okay, somebody could type all kinds of stuff in this file to make this program break. So it's up to you, the programmer, to make your program indestructible. You have to make it immune to anything that a user can do. And I have personal experience. Your users, the people who use your programs, will have no clue what they're doing. They will do all kinds of wacky things to make your program break that you never expect. What if the 20 would be money and the program thinks his age is meant to do that? Well, that's that's kind of an input validation thing. If, when you're writing your program, something like this, you would also write some documentation saying, this is the kind of input I expect. What if the 20 would be the money and the program thinks his age is meant with that? Oh, so you're saying uh, if this file is generated somewhere else by some other program, and when it asks them, how old are you, he just, he doesn't type anything. And so, what it would probably do is he would put two spaces. In which case, string split would probably work. And then his age would just be a null, uh, not a null string, it would be an empty string. So this would still work, I think. See, so, uh, what did I do? Something went wrong. They're all null now. If data, line split, space, if data length less than three. Oh, less than or... Wait, if it's less than three. Oh, I, I did this backwards. If it greater than or equal to three, then do this. Otherwise, okay, I, I had that backwards. Now I'll do it. Yeah, so it just says his age is empty. If there was an extra space there. But it's up to you as a developer to document what kind of input is acceptable. It's up to you to decide, is he allowed to have an empty age? Or is it required? Okay, and you would for you would enforce that in your code. So you would make your code check: Does this have all the data I expect? That that's really up to you. So if you wanted to allow this, you can allow this. You don't have to. It's up to you. And like I said, most of the the code that you will see and most of the code that you will write is this kind of stuff. You're just basically detecting if something can go wrong and preventing it from going wrong. That's a lot of what you will code. So that's that's file IO and we've solved Sir Pandy's homework assignment or whatever it was. I don't know if it was your homework, but I did it anyway. Is it better to handle exceptions in main or in the class that can bring up the problem? It's better to do it in the class that oh, I did do that, didn't I? Yeah, the IO exception was being thrown by um, by this? Is this where the IO exception is thrown? Yeah, you should not put throws on your main. That, that's actually really bad. Where is it actually going to be called? On new scanner? Yeah, so I would actually, uh, you'd probably have a method to do this, and you would put the, the try outside here, and the catch would be down here. And then you'd, you'd handle it inside here. You'd log it or print out an error or whatever. Oh, the IO exception also happens up here. The reason I, I put it on the thing is because, the reason I put it on the main method, um, 
is because I didn't want to write too much code. <laughs> Alright, so, Serpent... Uh, actually, I'll keep answering Rascal's question about when, sh where should you try to catch your exceptions. I would make your try-catch blocks as small as possible in scope. So, in this case, I would start it probably actually right here. And I would catch it at the end of all the data related to the file. And this is pretty much the same thing as doing it on the whole method. But I would not do it on the whole method unless there are some cases where you want a method to throw an exception. I can't think of one at the moment. But there are cases where you'd want to do that. Um, if your method has a contract, if your method has an API that says, I only accept these values. If you give me any other value, I throw an exception. So that's when you'd make a method throw an exception, but you would never do that to a main method, ever. So actually writing try catch around all my code is actually better. And I don't have to import it, sweet. And then I would put like e dot print stack trace, so I would know what error I got. All right, so um, Pandy, we are doing something similar in C++, but we didn't go to splitting. I don't even know if C, I, I, was, I would assume that C++ has a split function on strings. It's pretty useful. Uh, scale, uh, I'm gonna like be able to just read your name and say it. Scaladindi says, I know Java, but I haven't done it in a long time. Know any Java 8? He's curious to know Java 8 tricks like functional programming. Okay, so Java 8, which was recently released this year, I, th I feel like it was maybe two or three months ago for the final release. They added some new things to the language. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start a new segment, because uh, it shouldn't go in the file I.O., but I'll be right back. I'm just going to stop the stream for like 10 seconds and probably get a drink, so I'll be right back.